That's it? Okay. Um, you know, every time I'm asked to speak somewhere, it reminds... Yeah, there we go. Ask and it happens. Okay. It reminds me of the first time I was asked uh, to speak at a, a gathering like this. I was at Notre Dame. I was a, uh, an undergrad there. And I was invited back to my grade school uh, to honor the basketball team at, uh, at their final banquet. So it was my first time speaking. I wanted to do very well. So I, I prepared. I had a long laundry list of things I wanted to talk about. I practiced and practiced. And finally, the night comes. I go back home to Pittsburgh. I get up there, and I, I hit every bullet point that I had. I just went in great detail about what I wanted to talk about. And finally, I sat down. After the banquet ended, um, I saw one of the young men over there, and uh, I thought I'd get a little feedback. So I went up and I asked him, I said, uh, what'd you think about the speech? To my great amazement, he said, if I only had 10 minutes to live, I'd like to listen to you speak. And before I could say anything, he said, it would seem like an eternity. <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm not going to stay up here long, hopefully, but I do, have, I do have about 40 years to cover about what I've been doing. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is to thank the uh, 1881 Alumni Association. They asked me to be an honorary governor. Uh, they said there's not much you have to do, and I said I can handle that. So I appreciate that. Uh, Bob Obilovich was an assistant during my time there. Uh, guys with an Ottawa U connection that I played with at, uh, in Ottawa, or Jeff, Mike Murphy, Doug Faulkner, who was really instrumental in, in getting me here tonight, uh, so I appreciate that. Tim Berryman, those were the Ottawa U uh, grads that, that I connected with in, in Ottawa. My rookie year, I come up, I didn't know what to expect about Canada, or about the CFL. And uh, it, there was obviously a vast difference. And just to give you an idea, day after a game at Notre Dame, what we had to do, had to get up early and run, had to go lift weights, had to go to a mandatory study hall. Uh, then we'd come back in the evening for uh, our training table. Um, we'd watch the film of the, uh, the game the day before. Then we'd watch film of the next week's opponent and then we'd finally start to install the next week game plan. So it was a long day. Uh, my rookie year in Ottawa, I don't know if it's still the case, I doubt it is, but you could not start practice until four o'clock because a lot of people had full-time jobs. So you'd play the game, you get to sleep in, you get to, do, get to go to lunch, whatever you wanna do, you come in at four o'clock, you, uh, you run through the film real quick, then you go out to the practice field for about 20 minutes. You run around, throw the ball. You come into the locker room. There's ice cold beer waiting for you. <laughs> Pizza, chicken wings, Chinese food. You'd sit around and drink a couple of beers, play liars poker. Then you'd uh, take a shower, and then you'd go out for a few more drinks. <laughs> and I, I was only a rookie, but I quickly learned I liked that routine a lot better than the other routine. I was coming to a veteran team uh, that year. Uh, people like Mark Cosmos, Jimmy Foley, uh, Tony Gabriel, who we used to call the Gabber because he loved to talk so much. Um, Wayne Smith, Donnie Smith, Jerry Organ, Jim Piaskowski, Wayne Tosh, Gary Kuzik, uh, a veteran group. Uh, rookies joining me were Condridge Holloway, uh, Billy Robinson, Jeff Turcott, big left tackle. So it was a good group of guys. But there was one guy who was the best. I don't know, does everybody remember Soupy Campbell? <laughs> now Soupy, at that time, he was, uh, he was about an eight or nine year veteran. Um, he was a perennial all-star. And he loved to have fun. Soupy had a motto. He said, embrace every temptation because you don't know if it's going to happen to you again. 
But Soupy was so well known. Um, you go into any bar, any restaurant, any golf club, anywhere in the city or in any CFL city, and people knew Soupy and Soupy knew him. Uh, Soupy, Soupy knew those people. Um, a story that kind of illustrates how well known he was. It's my rookie year, he asked me to go with him to a golf outing. Uh, I forget where it was, but it was about two hours outside the city. So we go up, we play golf, we come in. Um, as usual, you have a couple drinks, you have dinner, they have the award ceremony. After the award ceremony, you have a few more drinks. And uh, pretty soon, it's about 10.30. And at that time, the bars in Ottawa closed at 1. And again, we're about two hours outside the city, so Soup says, hey, let, let's get back. We can hit a couple places before they close. So I said, okay. So I, I drove. And uh, I, I don't drive fast, so we're, we're driving along. I'm under the speed limit. He looks over. He said, hey, speed it up. We've got to get back. So I went another kilometer. That's correct, kilometer. Kilometer, a, a kilometer or two, still under the speed limit. And then one of the only times I saw Soupy get mad, he looks at me. He says, stop the car. He says, you get in the back seat. I'm driving. So I'm a rookie. I, I said, okay, Soup, I'll get in the back seat. Pretty soon he takes off. He's five kilometers over the speed limit. 10, 20, 25. Next we uh, see the red light flashing. We hear the siren. So Soupy pulls off the road. And uh, the policeman comes up. Soupy gives him his license. He looks at the license, he looks at Soupy in the front seat, he looks at me in the back seat, and he gets kind of a quizzical look on his face. And he looks at Soupy again, and then he looks at me again, and he steps away to call his chief back in the station. And we could overhear him. He says, Chief, I, I, I just stopped someone for speeding, and I don't know what to do, because they are big. <laughs> and he says, what do you mean? He says, they're big, I don't know what to do. He said, well, who is it? Is it the mayor of Ottawa? And he said, no, someone bigger. He said, is it the premier of the province? He said, no, someone bigger. He says, well, who is it? Is it Pierre Trudeau, who was the prime minister at the time? He said, no, someone bigger. He said, well, who is it? He says, I have no idea, but Soupy Campbell is his chauffeur. <laughs>